I'm a little salty about Salty Sunday this week. Come see why. So I gotta figure out something to do with this tank. I kind of given up with the algae. I'm just, it's a part of my tank. So I can't seem to get rid of it. So you can see it's up. I still like the tank and I still like my corals. And I know that a lot of my corals are considered kind of like nuisance corals or weeds. But that's okay. I can grow weeds, I like it. And I love my shrimp in there and the little clownfish we had to take him out of the other tank. He wasn't doing so good. Three of the clowns were really picking on him brutally. So I removed him and put him here. He seems to be doing very happy. I'm sure two of those fish will, two of the clowns will turn on the other one soon enough and then I'll see which ones are pairing up. But for now, there's three in the big tank and one in here. Can you see that? Oh yeah. So let's see. This is from the side view. I did try to clean the glass, it's really hard. If you could see under there, I've got some, I forget what the green stuff is called, some of those plants from the refugium, but I put them in over here because John took them out. He thought there were too many, and I know I could use the, the help in this tank. If they can outgrow the algae, maybe that'll help, and I'll just keep doing water changes, and I increase the flow, and then somebody said I increase the flow too much. Um, I keep like brushing off the, the algae and then uh, I brush it off with a toothbrush and suck it up really quick with a, a little vacuum so that there's none left behind. I'm trying. I had some snails in there that didn't make it very well. I had a sea hair in there that didn't make it very well. I had a little red dragon in there, dragonette. I love that little guy. Um, but because the tank is so unstable, I couldn't get any, you know, cocoa pods going. I kept putting them in the tank every week, but that gets very expensive. And then I thought I had a colony and then my tank crashed and there went the dragonette. So I'm not even going to buy another one until I have a, a bigger coral tank, a bigger tank that I know he'd be safe in, that he would do well in. Um, and at first I wasn't going to do a video on this tank because I like doing videos in all my tanks that I'm very successful in, but this is the real deal, man. I've been in the hobby a year. I have a nano coral tank that I struggle with all the time. And I know I can't be the only one out there, so I just figured might as well put it out there. Um, I'd love any suggestions. I did get some really good suggestions last time, but I've just come to the, kind of like to the understanding that I'm gonna have algae in this tank on the rocks and I'm just gonna keep it at bay. I'm okay with it, and I like them. And I love my shrimp and my goby in there too. They are such a cool team. And I like the clownfish, and I like my other little goby, so it is what it is. That's my salty Sunday. I'm a little salty about my salty Sunday, aren't I? <laughs> I didn't mean to be. <laughs> I do get frustrated with this tank though. It's like, no matter what I try, all the suggestions I try, putting phosphorus, Phosphate, not phosphates, phosphate remover stuff in the back. Now you gotta keep, mine is a very small back like I showed you. It's the protein skimmer, I can never get it to work properly because it's so tiny and just the hair off and it overflows and then it, I keep trying, <laughs> I keep trying. Doesn't mean I like it any less, it just means it's a little more high maintenance than my other tanks. But I have it and I have it as a commitment until I can figure something better out. If I thought these corals would work well in this, the, the 74 bow front, I would put them in there, but there's too many fish in there that would just destroy them. So they seem to be doing well here. I put on the blue light, they're spectacular. So I let it go. But yeah, I, I have the, the shrimp and the goby still in there. They are hiding in that little hidey hole. I wish they would come out, but yeah, they're, they're not only going to come out when they want to come out, and they're certainly not going to come out here unless I set up my camera. I did that once. I set up my camera and walked away, and then I just edited the film for when they did come out. And then I have a, uh, we call him a sand goby. I have to look at him, see what kind it is. It's the same color as the sand. He's got a little, like, uh, fin that goes straight up on the top. 
I'll grab a picture and put it there, but I can never quite capture him. I actually almost th I thought he was gone. And then the other day when I was feeding him, out he came. I was like, what? Very happy about that. But this is the other tank that I use, uh, I do water changes on. More often on this tank than I do the big tank because it just seems to always have so many nitrates and phosphates and I keep trying so if there's any suggestions let me know the last video I posted on this tank the suggestion was to turn off the air blower when I fed them I found that I, f I can feed them a lot lot less when I do that because now I can like directly feed them and it's great so I forget who gave me that comment or that suggestion but thank you very much oh. that's my salty sundae Thanks, guys. <laughs>